just reach over and take somebody's hand. And if you didn't hear me the first time, it's because my voice is horribly overworked. And as you're touching somebody, I am reminded as I go around the place, all over the place, that we've endured 25 years of health, wealth, and prosperity preaching. And by now, all of us should be millionaires. <laughs> somebody didn't remind us, or somebody didn't tell us. I don't know what the stat is here, but somebody should have told us that 40 million Americans would be behind on their mortgages. 25 years of health, wealth, and prosperity preaching, somebody should have said that six million Americans would lose their home. And I say America because as America goes in the theological matrix, so does the rest of the world go. Because they expostulate on television and everywhere else what is supposed to be the word of God. We've expostulated faith at the expense of love. And we grew rather cold because our disposition to our needy brothers and sisters changed because if they had the faith we had, they could have what we had. So we ignore their need simply because we justify ignoring their need by declaring they didn't have the kind of faith. When Jesus said, the poor we'll have with us always. We became less community and more self-centered. And for 25 years, we've had to endure. And the prophet should have told us that the homes we bought were loaned to us predatorily. And that even though we got in them to prove that God was blessing us, we couldn't keep them long. 25 years of health, wealth, and prosperity preaching. And somebody declared that the wealth of the wicked saved up for the righteous. And yet the greatest transfer of wealth is going from the Christian West to Muslim countries at the tune of $900 billion annually. I want to talk to some folk that want to move from the ethereal, the mystical, the ontological, and become more dialectical. I want to talk to folk who want to separate, who have separated from years their spirituality from their ethics. And I think it's time to connect what happens in church with what goes on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Somebody said, and the scripture said, that the borrower is servant to the lender. So how is it that the Christian West can owe Confucius, Buddha, and the Hindus three to five trillion dollars? There is a shift, and Christianity is going from the ethereal, from the God is going to do it for you, to the God has to do it through you. And we have to shift from what we have to who we are. And as you're holding these hands, you better fall in love with the children of God. And you better start loving the people around you because if the economics keeps going the way it is, you won't know who you're going to have to move in with. Squeeze those hands. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. And we're living in challenging times because our experience and our expectation has not come together. So many of your children have been expecting so much based on the word that has been given them for these many years. And now, Lord, they are 
living in doubt, living in sorrow and distress because their experience and their expectation did not come together. I pray now, Lord, that you send us real word, send us a true word, send us the powerful word that will build us, strengthen us, and give us power. And I claim now that you send victory in this house. Bless the hands we hold. Bless my brother and my sister. Bring them through every challenge that they have to face. And I claim it done right now. And we won't forget to praise you. We will lift you up and glorify your name. Ah, squeeze those hands. I press into these hands power. I press into these hands a fresh anointing. I press joy in these hands. I press deliverance in these hands. I press right now power in these hands. And I claim it in the name of Jesus. Bless my brother and my sister. In Jesus' name, somebody loose hands. Give God a praise. Give God glory. I don't know what you come to do. But I come to praise the Lord. I come to clap my hands. I come to jump for joy. Jump for joy. I don't know what you come to do. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We honor the Lord tonight and we're very grateful to God for allowing us to be here, having traveled all, I mean, very far. We thank God for his protecting mercies and, and for the strength that he gives. And, uh, and he gives sense too. He gives us some wisdom. Uh, I thank God for his strength when I don't use wisdom, but I need to incorporate some wisdom when it comes to operating the strength that God gives. Amen. Uh, I was in Baltimore yesterday, or was it day before yesterday, but I flew in a cross-country home and I stayed there 12 hours to do Bible class. Missed the first plane coming here last night. And uh, instead of going from LA to Miami, I had to go from LA to Chicago and then Chicago across again, having come from Africa two weeks ago and, and then did Vancouver, New York, Detroit, Freeport all in one week. And so if it seems like, um, you know, sort of going slow tonight, uh, come back tomorrow night. <laughs> but it's always an honor to be with the Bishop John Klein. Amen. 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 It's always an honor. It's a privilege. And, and, and certainly to his associate minister and pastor and to the New Life Baptist Church. Amen. To all of you that represent this church. Amen. Amen. To, to all of the my fellow yoke servants in the vineyard, to all the other preachers and teachers of the people very certainly to my good friend John and to this great choir and to the musicians and to everybody who serves in the household of faith. It's just a marvelous thing to be here, the year of the Lord, uh, 2009 Power Plus Crusade. And I have to say something about leadership because great leaders are endangered species. And when you have a great leader, and leaders among you, you should give God great thanks. Uh, yes, yes, we, and, 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 and when we have good leadership in our homes, it, it makes for better lives. I have been doing Bible class recently with a neuropsychologist and I never ever thought that there was such pain in the church. I am beginning to believe that if the church can just get people 